So, uh, yep, our final talk for this first morning is Kaveh Fathian, who is uh, currently at the uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And he'll be speaking on graph theoretic frameworks for robust data association. Uh, thanks, Nick. Let me go ahead and try to um, see. There was an option here that was saying optimize for video quiz, and I'm going to check that because I have some videos here. Okay, so so uh, thanks for um, thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk here. And uh, this is I want to mention a collaboration work with uh, Parker Lost and John Howe at MIT. Um, and what I'm going to do is to first motivate the problem and the topic that I'm really interested in these days, and that's multi-agent situational awareness. And by definition, situational awareness is perception, comprehension, and prediction of the elements and events in the environment. And uh, think about this image that you have a drone and it's moving in the environment, it's mapping it. You want to understand where are the trees, where are the people here, where are the cars, where are, where are they going to be? And, and the keyword here is multi-agent. I want this to be collaboratively done by multiple robots. So uh, multi-agent situational awareness, it requires fusion of observation by these agents in order to get a global map that's uh, useful. And uh, here's a little cartoon of this. So suppose I have two robots here and they all had this uh, RGBD map of the environment, map one and two. What I really want to do is somehow fuse and combine them and to get a global uh, consistent map of this environment that's uh, generated jointly by them. So uh, to, to ground this a little bit more and uh, really motivate the problem. So we are recently doing these experiments that we have, uh, as you can see here, this jackal robot in the bottom. And uh, this video that you see here is the camera on top of the jackal. It's moving in the environment. These are the keyframes that we extracted from the jackal as it was moving in this uh, parking area. And uh, what, what we did is that we took this set of images and we reconstructed a 3D model of the environment as a point class using the technique that uh, in computer vision is called a structure from motion. So here's the point cloud that's reconstructed here. Um, it is, uh, you see the trees here and the buildings and. These are all the 3D points that are generated. There are over 1 million points here. And uh, the, the red uh, marks that you're seeing here, that's the position of the image where uh, the, the, the image, that image was taken from and is registered. So, so think about this now. This is one robot, and I can run this through SFM and generate this uh, point cloud map of the environment. So now the question is, what happens if I have two robots, if I have 10 robots? Uh, they're all gonna generate this point cloud maps of the environment, but at some point they need to be able to fuse them to get one big map for me. And what is required here is data association and it kind of connects very well with what, uh, uh, with what Warren was saying in the first talk. Um, and uh, what, what you really need to do in these cases is to find the identical elements and the objects or the points that these robots have seen in order to be able to align your maps and fuse them. Uh, and this is an extremely challenging problem. It just happens because uh, in practice, you have lots of outliers or lots of points that should not be matched with each other. There's even on the points that should, not, should be matched with each other, there's noise because you're not going to perfectly align. And uh, you have this partial view cases that maybe your robots only see part of the environments, the other robot. Um, also see another part and there's very few overlap between them. Um, and these really make this problem of finding these identical elements uh, extremely challenging. So uh, now the question is uh, why does it matter? I mean, why should you get it right? And what happens if there are some outliers when you uh, do the matching? Uh, it, uh, in, in several applications, uh, it, it can be really detrimental. Like if you're thinking about generating a 3D map of the environment from say RGBD images, if you get these outliers, if you don't correct them, you get the map that you're seeing here on the top left part instead of uh, getting this one. 
And uh, there's a simultaneous localization and mapping, and there's a thing called loop closure. You want to identify if you revisited the place. And if you don't have a robust technique that can uh, get rid of the outliers for you, it can completely destroy the map if you integrate that into uh, your, say, uh, MLE estimate. And uh, Warren, again, was talking about this object tracking and uh, person VID or uh, the, the general VID problems could be you know, people, could be cars that uh, you're seeing them with, with cameras. If you have uh, a person that went through this trajectory and another person uh, here, and if you, if you mess this up and if you associate the wrong label of say one robot to another one, you're gonna lose track of them. So it's extremely important uh, to solve the data association problem. It shows up in a lot of applications and what we really want to do is to robustify this to these uh, outliers of wrong association. So for the rest of this talk, I'm going to talk about how to robustify this. And particularly, I want to focus on the point cloud example, because this is very simple to illustrate and talk about. But uh, I want to mention that this is generalizable to uh, other scenarios. And I'm going to briefly talk about that towards the end. Uh, so here's the typical example that you have this uh, blue point cloud. This is the Stanford bunny, and there are this clutter of red point clouds. And you want to associate the points that are these uh, highlighted blue points. You want to find them in this clutter point cloud so that uh, you don't know exactly what, what where they are. So you get lots of wrong associations, this purple uh, lines here that are matching the points. And the green ones are correct associations you want to be able to identify. So in order to do that, we uh, recently proposed this algorithm called Clipper that was pre presented in ICRA this year. And uh, the key idea is uh, rather straightforward. So it's uh, based on invariant geometry on the transformations. And again, just thinking about the point cloud example, we suppose you have this rigid body uh, bunny here, and there are some points here on the bunny. And uh, this bunny has gone under rigid rotation trans translation. Now it's uh, this location, and you have also identified these points. And, and, and the key points of invariance here is that if you, if you take these two points on the nose and on the, uh, the, uh, uh, the ear, the distance between these two points is going to remain the same, if you, no matter how you rotate and translate the bunny. And this is the, really the key point that we're going to leverage to solve this problem. Uh, and just as a reference, uh, people have looked at this problem. Tim Bailey, around uh, 2000, first came up with this technique for LIDAR registration. And there have been lots of recent work, but I'm going to touch on that uh, shortly and uh, do some comparisons. So really, this is the key slides that show you how you can do that. So, so suppose I have this blue points here on, on this bunny, and this is another observation, the orange points. right? So these are my blue points here, my orange points. And I have some putative associations. Some of them are correct, the green ones, and some of them are wrong, these purple ones. Uh, what I want to do is to get rid of the purple ones and just keep the green ones. So what I'm going to do is to construct something that I call the consistency graph. And uh, I'm going to take pairs of as association. So I just pick these two pairs. And I'm going to look at the distance between the endpoints. So if this distance d is equal to distance d prime, uh, then everything is great. And uh, I'm going to add an edge here in this consistency graph. So every node in this consistency graph is going to represent an association. So he, this, these lines here are going to map to these nodes. And if these two nodes are consistent or these two associations are consistent, then I'm going to add an edge here. So if I go ahead and do this for all of the association pairs, right? I take u1, u3, u1, u2, u1, u4, so on. I get a graph like this. And then the claim is that the largest set of consistent associations is the maximum click in this graph. So, so a click is a fully connected component of the graph. And here, if you look at this U1, U5, U3, that's a click, that's a triangle. And if I take these three, this is going to be the correct association for me. So really, this is the key idea. Now, the challenge is that you have noise. So if you pay attention to the orange points here, you know when I'm adding noise, they're going to switch a little bit. So, so this consistency graph is never you know, this perfect graph that you have the maximum click there. 
but you really have in practice some edges that are stronger, they're more consistent, some edges are less consistent, and you have this weighted graph. And what you want to do is to now, given this weighted graph, find this quote unquote maximum click. Okay, so um, there are some methods that ignore this weighted case and just operate on the unweighted graph, the binary uh, weight case. And they run into an issue. So for example, if you get this symmetric case where uh, in this graph, you know, you have two clicks, you have the click U1, U5, U3, and U1, U2, U4, you really don't know which one you're gonna choose and you don't have those weights to uh, pick the one that is uh, likelier to be the correct solution. And there are some techniques that look at the weighted case in the literature, but they, they often model this as a dense subgraph problem. And uh, it turns out that the solutions that they end up sometimes violate this click constraint. So you get some solution like this, you pick U1, U2, U3, U5, but some of the, there are some missing edges here, which shows that some of the associations are inconsistent and you get wrong associations. So the question that we try to address is that how to leverage uh, these a uh, weighted case while maintaining these uh, consistency constraints, hard consistency constraints. And uh, I, I do have some math here, but I'm not gonna talk about any sort of um, the deep mathematical uh, proofs and notions here. I'm just gonna refer you to the paper. Uh, but, but at a very high level, uh, uh, we have a graph and we wanna find the quote unquote densest click in this graph subject to some hard constraints. We don't wanna find we don't want to select nodes in this graph that are inconsistent. So we get uh, an, an adjacency matrix of the graph uh, with uh, some scores on the diagonal that's called affinity matrix. And this U is an indicator vector that pre and post multiply by this matrix M. It's a binary vector that basically selects for you which, which nodes here you want to you wanna choose, which are the associations that are correct. And um, this, is, this is a problem that you cannot solve. It's, it's going to be finding the maximum click in the graph in NP hard. And as the problem size grows, it becomes quite impossible to solve. So uh, we solve a relaxed version of this, uh, or namely an approximate version of this problem. Um, and after doing some math, you bring it into this form. Uh, and uh, now the, the, the this relaxation, first of all, is inspired by a very recent cool work by uh, Bellachu and Nick Gillis. Um, and uh, it's a very interesting work that shows that you can find the maximum clicks of a graph, which is this NP hard problem. You can, you can solve this uh, by solving this relaxed problem. And the solutions of this relaxed problem, which you can find in polynomial time and very fast, are going to be the maxima of the original problem. Uh, so what I want to really emphasize here is that this, this NP hard problem, it means that you cannot find the global maximum in polynomial time, otherwise uh, it was not NP hard. So what you're finding is a maximum, which means that there's these cliques here, which are not necessarily the largest clique. So maybe you find this triangle here instead of finding the largest click, which was this S square. Uh, but every solution of this relaxed problem, you have that guarantees that it's going to be a maxima of the original problem. And we're gonna leverage that um, results. We're gonna use this relaxation. Uh, and uh, again, I'm not gonna talk much about the math here. We have a homotopy approach to, to solve this optimization problem uh, quickly. And uh, uh, we, we have at the end, we have guarantees that the, all the solutions that converge to are gonna be the maxima uh, of the original binary problem. So now let's look at some of the analysis here. So we have this synthetic case here. We had the, the bunny point cloud. We had 1,000 initial associations here. And we are changing the initial associations from uh, the, uh, the ratio of outliers from zero outliers all the way to the case that everything is an outlier. And then we are feeding this into the clipper algorithm and we're comparing it with the state of the art and seeing um, how they perform. So Looking at the Clipper results, you see that um, up to 90% of the associations being outlier, the Clipper output is gonna be perfect. There's, uh, there's absolutely no errors in the output returns. And in terms of timing, it's also pretty consistent. So it's around 100 milliseconds for uh, all 
uh, outlier ratios. And when you compare this with, again, a state-of-the-art algorithms that uh, are used for uh, solving the point cloud registration problem, you see that these techniques that do not use the weighted regime, they, they start to break down around 60% outliers. And in, in the output, you see that the precision is dropping, which means that you have some wrong associations. And also there are some weighted uh, techniques that are based on dense subgraph problems. They do not have the uh, consistency constraint in force. And you see that the precision drops very fast as you have, as you go toward these high outlier regimes. Um, and in terms of scalability of the method, again, uh, we have this on the y-axis here, the outlier ratio changing from 0% to 100%. Uh, and as I mentioned, this is a relaxation. It's an approximate of the original problem. So the question is that, well, if it's an approximation, how good of an approximation is it? How close the answer is to the global optimum? So the global optimum here is this technique. It's called PMC exact. Um, so uh, we want to ideally be as close as possible to this answer. So we want our optimality gap or error to be small. And the green line here is Flickr, which you see is really good. It's uh, on par with Belcher's algorithm. And the other algorithms that are solving the approximate uh, problem, they're sometimes producing very large errors. And again, if you compare Clipper with, uh, in terms of runtime, uh, it's running very fast. And in terms of scalability, when you increase the problem size, you see that it's really very well scalable. Well, um, uh, for you know problems up to five thousand associations, it runs less than five seconds. And this was our older algorithm. Now it's even faster. And uh, there are other techniques like PMC. It really just blows up uh, very fast and becomes uh, untrackable. Uh, so this is the one slide that I have. Uh, let me see how I'm doing that time. Okay, so. Um, I, everything that I talked about so far was for uh, point cloud registration problems, right? Uh, but this is a very general tool. Uh, all you really need is that notion of invariant, which says uh, you, you find some metric that under the transformation that your data has gone under, uh, that, that metric remains invariant. It, it's, it's not going to, to change. So think about, for example, a scale point cloud. So if I have something that's now a scaled down, obviously the invariance of distance is not going to work for me anymore. The distances have changed. But if you pick now, instead of two points, three points here in say your blue and red point clouds, and then you look at the angles between the, uh, sorry, the triangles that these three points form, right? So that if the point cloud has gone under rotation and translation and is scaling, then it means that these triangles are going to be similar if they're correct association. So, so angles are your invariance here. Um, you can think about line clouds. So say match the lines here on this, uh, on this set to the, to the correct um, uh, pair here on the red set. And in, in this case, the invariant could be the distance between two lines. Or if you have intersecting lines, it could be the angles between those intersections. So those are the things that kind of, again, do not remain unchanged under your uh, rotation translation that the point uh, or the lines has gone under. And you can also use it to, to match planar patches. And I think this was taken from the Ford AV data set that we are, this is a LIDAR point cloud and we are fitting planes into this and we are uh, getting rid of the outlier matches using Clipper. Again, the, the key idea is to find the right invariant. So here's some experimental results. We had uh, these uh, RealSense D435 sensors here. These are the RGBD cameras, and uh, they've generated this dense point class for us. We selected a, a smaller number of points here. We use SIFT key, uh, key, key points and uh, we just use the, SIFT, the standard SIFT algorithm to match them based on the SIFT descriptors. And you see there are lots of wrong matches here that's generated. Uh, however, when we feed that through Clipper in 100 milliseconds, it finds uh, the correct association. And this is really a small portion of the uh, initial matches. So we had 1,000 initial matches and only eight of them are correct. And Clipper correctly identified them. And here's uh, the sort of fuse point cloud that you get. So I have those two point clouds. I find the correct association. I find the, uh, say, the least square alignment. And then uh, once I align them, uh, I, I fuse them like this. 
All right, I have some final remarks here. Um, and uh, so, so uh, I, I mentioned that, uh, and, I, and I think Ashwin also mentioned there's, that there's, this, uh, there's this algorithm called iterative closest point, ICP, uh, that is a very popular algorithm for matching uh, points in two sets. Uh, this is an algorithm that's uh, in this community is called the local method. Uh, it's a non-robust method, and this, if you if you use these algorithms, it's very likely to fail uh, to reject outliers in this uh, high outlier high high noise regime. And here's an example for you that we applied ICP to this uh, sort of initial association here, and it uh, really failed. The reason is that if you think about this as an optimization problem, uh, these techniques tend to get us stuck in the local optima and cannot converge to that global optimum. So that's why they call local methods. Um, so it's quite important to use robust techniques and RANSAC, uh, if you're familiar with random sample consistency algorithm is a very powerful tool uh, to make uh, many algorithms robust. Uh, in the case of point clouds, I wanna mention, uh, interestingly, it's not, uh, it, it's more costly to use RANSAC than uh, an algorithm like Clipper because uh, you need to pick randomly select sets of three points. You will need to find a rotation translation model that map these three points from the blue point cloud to the red point cloud. And then you're gonna have to keep doing this again and again and again uh, until you sort of come to a uh, sort of maximum likelihood answer uh, for what the correct model that fits into your data is. And this can become extremely time consuming uh, when you're dealing with data that has uh, more than 50% outlier, you have to really set your thresholds conservative and that can uh, be, uh, become, that can really uh, slow down finding the right answer. Um, so uh, uh, the, the solution that we came up with was the clicker algorithm that is formulating the problem as this dense click formulation in this weighted setting. And it works extremely robustly for these high outlier regimes. So in cases that you have more than 90% outliers, uh, it, it finds the correct associations. Uh, and again, I wanna emphasize that this is a very general algorithm. It says uh, not only for point clouds, as long as uh, you find the right invariant for your problem, you can go ahead and use this algorithm kind of out of the box and uh, get rid of the uh, outlier associations. Uh, so I'm just gonna stop here and say that we have a very, uh, very nice uh, software engineer, C++ code for Clipper that runs super fast. Uh, it's here, free on GitHub. Feel free to check it out. Also there are Python wrappers and MATLAB wrappers for this. So you can directly use it uh, in those languages if you prefer. And uh, I think I'm doing okay on time and uh, there's still some time left for questions and discussion. Uh, thanks, Gabi. So yeah, that was, that was very interesting. And I, I definitely see <clears throat> applications in it, a lot of the other stuff that we'll probably see today in connections to it. Um, you know, robustness of data is one of the main, main problems that I know I face in my, my research. But I'll let me open up the floor for uh, any questions that we have. Yeah, I know I don't see the a screen right now very well. So if there are any questions in the chat or. I had a quick um, question, Kave. Yeah, please go ahead. Um, so after you've done, I mean, that's pretty impressive that you're able to find those matches like that. Uh, I was just kind of wondering, is it possible once you have those to go back and fix all of the points that are getting bad correspondence? Um, so fix all of the points that you have bad correspondence. Or yeah, so, just like a, a good portion of the points so that you could maybe, right. uh, right. Do, yeah. Um, it's, it's a very interesting question, Zach. Um, I think one thing that I want to mention is that some points are never going to be fixable. That's a, it's a partial view setting, right? So there are some points maybe that are observed by your robot one that robot two has never seen. Right. So, so if you have an association between in, in, between such points, uh, the best thing that you can do is to just remove that association. Now, 
if the question is that there are some points here that because of noise, uh, uh, I had a bad association and is, is it possible that I go and adjust them so that they fit better? Is that, is that the question? Am I understanding this right? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, let's say that there's something that we really want to track, but we're not getting good correspondence on or good points on there, but we are getting something good on something else using this type of an algorithm. Are we then able to say, okay, now we have this area of interest or this region of interest that we want to try to fix everything in using this correspondence that we've gotten. You see what I'm saying? Um, not clearly. Like I, so, so I don't really know what is, what can you do if you don't have good associations? Like if you, like, like what, why, why do you think that you don't get good association? Is it because there was not enough overlap or something else? Um, I mean, it could, it could be something like that, I guess, overlap, or just um, in the case of a stereo camera, you know, maybe it's just really far away points. Um, so you have really bad uh, parallax or something. I see. I see. Yeah. So, okay. Now, now I'm starting to understand. Yeah. So, so I guess what you, okay, let me clarify this. So what you get from this algorithm is a set of points that are consistent. Um, as you represented them, right? So it's, it's not, it doesn't have the capacity and say, uh, let me go and readjust the location of this point uh, so that it becomes consistent, right? It doesn't have that capability. And what you're asking reminds me a little bit of uh, the uh, post graph optimization or factor graph optimization. I don't know if you've heard of those. Yeah, that's, that's kind of. Yeah. Right. So, so or, or a structure from motion in computer vision, right? So, so, so you, you find some associations and then you go and allow your, the position of the points to be tweaked to, to become consistent uh, with your associations, right? And, and that's, that part is not here. This is the association part. And I believe you can add on top of that the, uh, the bundle adjustment part. Okay. Cool. It's pretty interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, so I think I was looking in the chat. Um, yeah, someone mentioned, I'm, I'm reading from bottom to top, so it's a teaser, right? So teaser by Luca Carlone at MIT, um, theoretical guarantees. And uh, yeah, so the difference, I think the question is, what is the difference between teaser and clipper? Uh, so it's a very great question. Thanks for asking this because uh, really, as I presented Clipper with registering point clouds, they're doing the same thing. Teaser is a robust uh, state-of-the-art technique for point cloud registration. Uh, Teaser has multiple uh, boxes inside this, its pipeline. One of them is a robust outlier rejection, rejection based on a, a similar state-of-the-art uh, uh, graph-based formulation that we're using. Teaser is actually using the PMC algorithm. So if I go back here, they have, they're using the PMC algorithm, this, this uh, purple line, um, and they're using that for outlier rejection. Uh, so the issue with that is that PMC can become quiet, uh, heavy computationally if you're looking at large, uh, large size associations. Whereas if you use Clipper, you can uh, potentially get orders of magnitude to speed up uh, if you're scaling up the data. Uh, but, but Teaser, I want to emphasize, it's just only one part, one block in the Teaser pipeline. Teaser has a, a robust uh, estimation uh, based on a truncated least square uh, technique after that. And there are lots of other components. Uh, but, and, and what you can do is to replace the third party PMC algorithm with the Clipper and then you get sort of a, an improved version of teaser. I hope that answered the question. Okay, well, um, we're, at, we're at our coffee break. So coffee, I do have one question for you, but I think I'll go ahead and say first, everyone, please you know, take uh, a little bit of time to get yourself 
coffee as a namesake, feed your children, um, you know, take whatever else you need to do. But also um, <clears throat> anyone who wants to stay online and ask questions or chat or, or whatever, I think uh, you're most welcome to. We will officially reconvene at um, 1045 Pacific time, um, in which case I'll be giving the first presentation at that time. Um, and with that, uh, Kavi, I did have a question for you. So uh, towards the end, you compared this to uh, Ransack in a kind of a high level because it's rather different. But I am curious, since Ransack is so general, you can use it for outlier projection with any kind of model. Do you see a way to extend what you're doing to away from these, you know, right now it seems like it's focused on 3D primitives, but do you see a way to move it into more general fields of problems? Um, right, yeah. So as long as you find the right invariant for it, you can. So think about applying Ransack on image feature matching, right? So you have typically these five point eight foot problems that I think you're also your talk is very related to, right? Uh, and if you can find an invariant, which is some metric, some property that is not going to be changed under that projective geometry transformation, then you can use the stick. However, I, I have to warn you, I have vision. to warn you that, right, so if, if you have to choose five points from your image one and five points from image two to find that invariant, uh, this becomes a, uh, sort of if you have sort of N association with N choose five type of uh, problem, it becomes really computationally heavy to solve. Like uh, at, at that point, it's, I think it's faster to use Ransack instead of this algorithm. Uh, thanks. Uh, I was really asking outside of even the field of vision, right? Because Ransack can solve all sorts of curve right. fitting, surface fitting for any kind of data. Yeah, right. just if, if it can be moved, your are yeah. outside of the field of vision even. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I mean, as long as you find that invariant, that, that property that's not gonna change under yeah. your transformation, you can always formulate it in this. It's very general graph theoretic formulation. Right. Do you think it has to be on, I'm trying to think, of, does it have to work on, on Cartesian space data sets or can you have data, so long as you have a metric that's defined on whatever manifold your data exists on? Right. Exactly. Okay. I can see that. 